every year, close to half a million hopeful high school seniors submit an application to one of the eight most prestigious schools in the United States. However, only 20,000 of them will receive an acceptance to the Ivy League, giving the league an acceptance rate of 4%. We've all heard of Harvard and Yale, but can you name the rest of the schools in the Ivy League? Even if you can name them all, how much do you really know about each school? Theodore Geisel was one of many students attending our first school in the league, Dartmouth, to be caught drinking during the prohibition. The university imposed a strict punishment on such students, a ban from all extracurricular activities. However, Theodore loved writing for the school's comedy paper and refused to give it up. So instead, he wrote under the pen name Seuss, which he would later use as the pen name for his career writing children's books, modifying it only slightly to be Dr. Seuss. Dartmouth is known for having the most prolific Greek life in the Ivy League, with over 60% of students involved in a Greek organization. The school is also the only school in the Ivy League to not have an official mascot. Without a mascot to rally behind, the students have created their own controversial mascot, Keggy the Keg. Harvard is the most famous school, not only in the Ivy League, but among all American universities. Harvard is well known for its alumni, as well as its dropouts. Eight U.S. presidents attended Harvard, including Barack Obama and John F. Kennedy. However, one does not have to have a completed degree from Harvard to be successful. There is success found even among the dropouts. Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft, and Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook, both dropped out of Harvard, but were later given honorary degrees after speaking at Harvard graduation ceremonies. It might surprise you that Harvard's most important contribution to law has nothing to do with its prestigious law school but rather by a murder of one of its professors. A business professor owed money to one of the alumni and was unable to pay the sum. So when that alumni showed up missing, he was quickly suspected. Human remains were found on campus under the professor's lab, and for the first time, forensic evidence was used in a murder trial, setting a precedent for all future U.S. murder trials. Ever since then, Harvard has invested heavily in their forensics program, and it is now one of the leading programs in the world. Many people know Princeton as the alma mater of Gotham City's biggest vigilante, Bruce Wayne. However, among its more real alumni, Princeton has claimed to two U.S. presidents, James Madison and Woodrow Wilson, along with other notable alumni, Michelle Obama and Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos. Princeton also boasts the highest early career salary of any Ivy League school, at $74,700. When it comes to sports, the Princeton Tigers dominate the Ivy League, having won more sports records than any of its peer institutions. Princeton also shares the distinction of being the only member of the Ivy League to have been to the moon and back. During the Apollo 12 missions, an astronaut commander who graduated from Princeton brought a flag with him to the moon, where it now sits in Princeton University archives. Can you guess the second largest landowner in New York City behind the Catholic Church? Is it McDonald's, the New York Public Library, or is it Columbia University? Although having the smallest campus size of any Ivy League, Columbia invests a significant portion of its endowment into land in New York City, making it the second largest landowner in the city. Columbia also owns the distinction of being the last Ivy League school to admit women, waiting all the way until 1983 to allow their admission. This didn't stop Amelia Earhart, however, who was able to enroll in Columbia University through its adjacent collegiate program, Bernard College. The school also carries such a rich journalistic tradition, being the administrator of the Pulitzer Prize, a prestigious award in journalism that Columbia awards to 13 leading journalists every year. American spy Nathan Hale said this when he was caught by British soldiers and hanged, I regret that I have but one life to lose for my country, spoken like a true American and Yale alumni. The university is so proud of their connection to Patriot Nathan Hale that they created a statue to memorialize him which sits outside his old dorm. After construction, the CIA took interest in the statue and made a generous offer to the university, which was refused. According to Yale authorities, CIA operatives scaled the walls of Welch Hall in the dead of night to recast an exact replica mold of the statue and recast it where it now sits outside their headquarters in Virginia. Yale's campus was also the alma mater of former President Bill Clinton and where he met his wife, Hillary Clinton. Perhaps you've heard of this next school, from its most famous graduate, Andy Bernard. Despite Andy claiming it to be the time of his life, this isn't the case with many Cornell students. Cornell ranks near top of the list when it comes to student unhappiness. 
They installed nets under the bridge to prevent students from trying to end their time at Cornell prematurely. However, many distinguished alumni have made it through Cornell's rigorous education system, including Bill Nye the Science Guy, the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and the recently famous Anthony Fauci. Cornell is also perhaps one of the most internationally recognized Ivy League schools, with campuses in Qatar, Rome, and a joint campus in Israel. Besides being well known for the Wharton School of Business and its alumni that include Donald Trump, Noam Chomsky, and John Legend, the University of Pennsylvania has a peculiar part of its history that no other Ivy League school can match. It's disputed how the tradition got its name, but most people agree it probably started with calling for the attention of a Joseph Rowbottom during the middle of the night outside of dorm windows. The story goes that Penn students got so mad they started throwing things out their window and shouting until the situation became a full-blown riot. Rowbottom soon became an honored tradition at Penn as a way to celebrate important sports games or protest perceived injustices, such as Rocky winning out over the network for best picture. Once a Rowbottom got started at Penn, it was near impossible to stop. Cars would be overturned, train tracks arsoned, windows smashed, and dorms broken into. At one point in Penn's history, panty raids of female dorms were a staple of Rowbottoms. Robotoms would often last multiple days and not be stopped until university officials and police put an end to it using riot control. The university cracked down on Robotom riots in the late 60s and has not seen a real Robotom since 1977. Brown University is the last school on this list and is well known for being the Ivy League school with the cheapest naming rights. In 1804, Nicholas Brown donated $5,000 to the school to rename it from Rhode Island College to Brown University. That is only $111,000 in today's money. John D. Rockefeller Jr., Harry Potter star Emma Watson, and football star John Heisman are among the more famous alumni of Brown University. But it is perhaps more well known for its distinguished professor, Josiah Carberry, a fictional professor well known for his contributions to the field of psychoceramics, the study of cracked pots. Carberry's existence, of course, started as a joke at Brown. But it is said that every Friday the 13th and February 29th, Students attend his lectures. He also appears as a reference in many papers and journals as a way to determine the validity of the paper. If the publisher doesn't catch that the cited reference is attributed to a person that doesn't exist, it undermines the reputation of the work. Broken ceramic jugs are placed all over Brown's campus, where students can drop off their loose change to go towards the Carberry Fund, which is used to improve campus in ways that Carberry may or may not approve of such as buying books on pottery or contributing to the broken pottery collection displayed around Brown's campus. Hopefully, after watching this video, you know a little more about the most prestigious schools in the country. For more interesting videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel.